Hi everyone, good morning guys. Am I audible and visible to all of you? Can I get a quick confirmation? And uh, then we can proceed without any delay. So please let me know if all's well. And uh, today we are meeting for, um, you can say, uh, a kickstart morning session itself. But this is being conducted over here on the YouTube channel and letting all of you know that since all of you requested, kickstart morning will definitely be restarting and on the Unacademy app itself. And it will be starting from um, 29th of September. So I'll give you a detailed, you know, timetable and how the kickstart mornings will be arranged. How would it help the FMG students? How would it help the NEET and INI CET students? So I'll give you a detailed of everything. But first, let's have a quick, I can say a Sunday morning boost on this session today. So a quick confirmation in the chat box if the audio, video and everything is good. If yes, then we can start right away. Okay. So please do let me know. And uh, we have, what is the plan? So we have a mixture of MCQs like uh, theoretical MCQs and image based. So a total of 10, 10 probably. And yes, all good. So let's start. So all rapid fire, we are trying to keep the session, uh, you know, as quick as possible. So that's the very first question that I've got for you, which is the most specific marker for the myeloid series. Myeloid series specific marker is CD 34, 45, 99 and 117. Out of this list, which is the specific one? So I'm waiting for your answers. Um, if, you, if you realize we've studied all of these over different classes, they're just putting it up in one class. And I had um, asked you this question before NEET also and that time a lot of students had got it wrong. So this is more of a repeat. Perfect. So the answer to this question is CD117, the most specific marker. First and foremost, I want to tell you that for myeloid series, the markers that you have are CD13, 33, 117 and myeloperoxidase. These are the markers which you have. So remember 13, 33, 117 and myeloperoxidase. Out of all of these, the only marker that was given in the question was 117. So I had to select 117. However, if you ask me which is the best marker for myeloid series, then actually the best marker is myeloperoxidase. So just in case, myeloperoxidase would have been there in the options. Along with CD117, your best answer would have been MPO myeloperoxidase. Now having said that, why not revise the other CD markers also? Can you tell me CD34? Where all do we study CD34? I'll give you an option of uh, letting me know um, at least three things. Three things where CD34 is studied. I hope you know it is a marker of endothelial cells. That is what CD34 is a marker of. Everyone knows vascular. Very good, Dr. Karthik. Vascular, others are saying endothelial cells. Other than that, it is a marker of hematopoietic stem cell. The stem cell is CD34 positive and there's one tumor which is CD34 positive, tumor of the stomach and that is GIST. That is also CD34 positive, guys. So these are the 34 positive list. Next, what do you think is CD45 positive? CD45 is the other name for any white blood cell. Leukocyte common antigen. What do you call it? You call it leukocyte common antigen. So obviously every leukocyte, every WBC is going to express CD45. Next, CD99. When I say 99, you have to think of one bone tumor and one ovarian tumor. Now you need to tell me both. One bone tumor, one ovarian tumor. Bone tumor is a very famous question. CD99, also known as MIC2, is the marker of Ewing sarcoma. Now, that, yes, very good, Dr. Tarek. That is what a question came in the AIMS exam also. In 2019, in the November session of 2019, there was a question, Ewing sarcoma, CD99 or MIC2. But uh, tell me the ovarian tumor also. Tell me the ovarian tumor, granulosa cell tumor, guys. Granulosa cell tumor is also CD99 positive. Very good, Dr. Apurva. We've got the answer. So CD99 also done and 117 over here. But 117 is associated with a lot of things. What is CD117 also known as? 117 is also known as a famous marker known as CKIT. 
Seek it is CD one one seven, and I think you guys have an idea that CD one one seven or Seek it is positive in what all? So there was a very famous mnemonic that whenever you carry a kit, whenever you go to play games, you carry a kit, right? So whenever you go to play games, you carry a kit, and games is your mnemonic. So let's complete the mnemonic. G stands for gist. Very good. Everyone says that, right? Games. G stands for gist, A stands for AML, M stands for mastocytosis, mastocytosis, ME, ME stands for melanoma, ME stands for melanoma, and S will stand for seminoma. So seminoma is in the testes, and everyone knows its ovarian counterpart. Dysgerminoma is in the ovary. So both of these. Are positive. Repeating games. Whenever you play a, a carry a kit, you do so for the games. G for gist, A for AML, M for mastocytosis, M E for melanoma, and S for seminoma and dysgerminoma. So having said that, the entire question has been worked out. Now, this is exactly what I wanted to tell you guys that whenever you practice a question, it's not that the same question will come to you as a repeat. It's basically that you need to work around all the options. Only then will you be able to get a repeat right if the question. Now the next time, one of the other options will come as a question. Now that's how you solve PYQs, that is previous year questions. Dr. Ashwarya, yes, Dr. Ashwarya has a query, very valid one. That for gist, so we'll write down your query here. For gist, do we have both CD one one seven as well as CD thirty four? Yes. In fact, there's one more marker. So we'll complete your story of gist also. For gist, we have one more marker that is dog one. So please remember, for gist, you finally have a total of three markers: CD one one seven, which is also known as C kit. Then you have dog one, and then you have CD thirty four. However, tell me, guys, now that this question has come up, let's um, help others. Tell me which is the most sensitive marker. If I ask you for gist, which is the most sensitive marker, then what would your answer be? I think everyone, yes, everyone does know it. CD one one seven or C kit is the most sensitive marker. On the other hand, if I ask you which is the most specific marker, now that's a very famous recent question. Recent, I would say five years or so. Most specific marker is dog one. You know, in fact, dog is name is designed or is a diagnostic of gist. Dog का full form क्या है? Dog is basically diagnostic of gist. So this was actually designed only for this particular tumor. You will not read it anywhere else. It is diagnostic of gist dog. That's why it is specific. I hope, Dr. Ashwarya, your query is sorted. With which our question is also done, right? Let's move on to question number two. There's an image that is shown to you. There's a question that is asked, and they ask you that the highest concentration of all rods is seen in which variety of AML? One, two, three, four, and they've given you an image over here. This cell, for example, is showing you lots of all rods. So, for example, if this is a cell, this is the nucleus. So, this cell is showing you lots and lots of all rods. Perfect. And those rods are crossing each other. So, remember, this cell is showing you crisscrossing of all rods. Crisscrossing of all rods. And what is such a cell known as where multiple rods are crisscrossing? Okay, very good. You are right. It is Dr. Shukla. Uh, not Fogart cell. It is opposite Fagat cell. Okay, it is the opposite, and that is Fagat cells. Now, what are Fagat cells? Fagat cells are the crisscrossing of the or rods. Okay. Now, someone says Mott cell. No, not at all. Where do first I'll uh, solve out all the wrong answers so that we are no not having any queries, guys. What is a Mott cell? What is a Mott cell? Yes, mott is seen in multiple myeloma. Mott cell is also known as the mulberry cell, and that is seen in multiple myeloma. So that is different. And now you've got it. It's different. Hai. I'm talking about Fagat cell, where you see crisscrossing of all rods, and that is seen in AML M3. AML M3 is also known as 
ए पी एम एल अक्यूट प्रो माइलोसिटिक ल्यूकीमिया सो दीज सेल्स दैट यू आर सींग ओवर हियर दीज आर ऑल प्रो माइलोसाइट्स अक्यूट प्रो माइलोसिटिक ल्यूकीमिया दे शो यू फैगेट सेल्स हाउ एवर आई वॉन्ट यू टू ट्राई एंड एनालाइज अगर थियोरी पढ़ाए यू विल बी एबल टू एनालाइज दिस सो ओवर हियर आई सी दैट ऑल द सेल्स आर लाइक हैविंग दैट क्रिस क्रॉस दिस दिस काइंड ऑफ एन ऑर रॉड फॉर्मेशन द सेम ऑर रॉड इन दिस सेल हैव बिकम अ राउंड बॉडी कैन यू हेल्प मी विद द नेम ऑफ दिस बॉडी एनी वन now the or rod still the time it was in the shape of a rod you called it or rod and faggot cell now i'm saying it's in the shape of a body the same thing when it becomes a round body it is known as a phi body it is known as a phi body right so yes i hope this this answer i've not got from many but i hope you guys yes now dr purva very good finally got an answer phi body correct so if the same granules they make a rod you call it or rod if they make a body you make it phi body and which leukemia are we talking about aml m3 now guys one thing that i want to ask you is there any mutation of acute pro myelocytic leukemia which is very very famous it is translocation 15 and 17 so when translocation see so aml aml m3 aml m3 or pro myelocytic leukemia 3 3 5 mana 3 ka multiple 15 so remember translocation 15 17 which is nothing but the fusion of pml rara so they ask you a lot of questions pertinent to that that when pml rara fuse what problem happens when pml if you want to treat it what are you going to do so i'm going to ask you a couple of questions but first if i tell you something then you know i will also ask you for something so first i will ask you tell me the entire wbc series guys this is what you will tell me and then i will tell you the later part can you tell me the first cell of the wbc series can i call it a myeloblast and now let's see if you can continue with the series after myeloblast what is the next one yes it is the biggest cell pro myelocyte after myeloblast it is pro myelocyte after the pro myelocyte the word pro is cut off and now you are landed up with myelocyte this is how wbcs are formed very good i can see everyone answering so pro word has been cut off myelocyte is there after that to this word myelo you add a word known as meta myelo so now you have the word meta added and that is known as meta myelocyte now after meta myelocyte the last one is a band form and after a band form we have a neutrophil or a neosinophil or a basophil whatever may be mature cell so very good excellent guys so repeating you have myeloblast after that pro myelocyte remove the pro myelocyte add a meta meta myelocyte band and mature cells now you know what happens when translocation 15 17 occurs or when pml rara fusion occurs there is a block pml rara fusion is going to cause a block over here this is what pml rara fusion does it creates a block over here so all the cells start from myeloblast they from myelos pro myelocyte and that's it so there's just an increase and increase and increase in pro myelocytes can they mature further they cannot mature further unless you give a treatment your treatment you if i say how do you uh, let me ask you a general question give me the answer to a general question that how do you treat any blood cancer usually forget this leukemia tell me how do you treat a blood cancer and your answer will be that ma'am we give the patient chemotherapy we give the patient chemotherapy but can you give chemotherapy here why do you give chemotherapy we give chemotherapy to kill the cells right kill the cancer cells so imagine if i give chemotherapy to kill these cells what will happen you'll say no ma'am over here you cannot do this it will be a disaster because if you give a chemotherapy all these cells will be killed the pro myelocytes will be killed and whatever things that they will release that will result in patient landing in dic 
patient will actually die because of chemotherapy patient will have a chance of dying because you gave him chemotherapy so remember chemotherapy is not to be given chemotherapy is actually a kind of a contraindication don't kill these promyelocytes otherwise patient will have dic then how do i treat the patient then i say the treatment of the patient will be to remove this block you have to remove this block and how do you remove this block you give a kind of a vitamin a why do you give vitamin a see the fusion was of something to do with vitamin a retinoic acid receptor alpha retinoic acid so this means i'm going to give atra i'm going to give all trans retinoic acid which everyone was telling me but i hope you've understood the concept behind it all trans retinoic acid will remove this fusion will remove this block and can i say that all the cells are going to now mature into the proper neutros eos basos proper maturation will happen but the promyelocytes are not supposed to be killed if they are killed patient will end up in dic so better is you give atra this block is removed and all these cells will mature apart from atra one more drug is given in combination yes excellent all of you are right and that is arsenic trioxide arsenic trioxide is also given along with the combination of atra so that is done and that tells us everything about aml m3 you've done the translocation you've done faggot cells you've done fi body and i think we are sorted let's move on to question number 3 and um, yes that is what you have in front of you So let me know, guys. Which of the following involves the red pulp of the spleen? Red pulp of the spleen, follicular lymphoma, hepatosplenic lymphoma, hairy cell leukemia, or both hepatosplenic and hairy cell? Answers have started pouring in, and we know that the correct answer is both B and C. Means the usual rule. If I ask you the usual rule. that spleen everyone knows spleen has two pulps ek red wala pulp hai ek white pulp wala pulp hai red and white now remember white pulp obviously is having white blood cells and all of that so all the white blood related things wbc related things leukemias lymphomas they will involve the white pulp of the spleen that's common sense white blood cell disorders white pulp mein hoga except two disorders hairy cell leukemia and hepatosplenic lymphoma hairy cell leukemia and hepatosplenic lymphoma for those who want to know this lymphoma is a t cell lymphoma it is a t nhl it is a t hepatosplenic lymphoma and hairy cell leukemia involve the red pulp that is what i had asked you which of the following involve the red pulp of the spleen and both hepatosplenic and hairy cell leukemia so your answer becomes b and c now guys there are a couple of red pulp white pulp question that the examiner asks you okay so in the spleen if you have red pulp and white pulp in regard to lymphomas you studied that i want to i want you to answer the uh, question of spleen with regard to amyloid in the spleen when amyloid deposits in the white pulp what do you call that condition and when it deposits in the red pulp then what do you call that now that's another red pulp white pulp question so yes very good i started getting answers obviously this is like a simple simple question white pulp getting a myeloid that is known as sagospleen whereas red pulp having a myeloid is known as lardaceous spleen and how should we learn this so that we do not have any confusion first and foremost many ways of learning it lal lardaceous sounds like lal so that is in the red pulp lardaceous can also be written as la redaceous so from today onwards instead of calling it lardaceous spleen you can call it la redaceous spleen so you will remember lardaceous is for red pulp second way of learning it is sago what is sago sago is sabudana right sabudana is a grain which is white in color so sago sabudana white in color will involve the white pulp now that's another way of learning it so yes this question is also done the spleen white pulp red pulp one more question is left if i ask you again i'm uh, writing down the same spleen and the white pulp and the red pulp where are the b cells and the t cells present are they present in the white pulp 
or are they present in the red bulb where are the b and the t cells the normal b and t cells of our body present see they are b cells and t cells they are lymphocytes b lymphocytes t lymphocytes these are all white blood cells right these are all white blood cells so obviously all the white blood cells will be present in the white pulp the b and the t lymphocytes are present in the white pulp but then how's that possible how can they like intermingle in the same place they must be having different different areas right so yes b cells and t cells are in the same white pulp but in the white pulp they've delineated their areas and the t cells have got a particular area this is first year histology question t cells is present in which part of the white pulp t cells are present in pals what is pals first year histo question guys i'll draw it and i'll also write it it is peri arteriolar lymphoid sheath so am i talking about lymphoid cells and lymphoid sheath yes i'm talking about which lymphoid cells i'm talking about t lymphoid cells where are they present in the white pulp are they present in the entire white pulp no you'll say ma'am if this is an arteriole a blood vessel the b the t cells the t cells are present all around this so it is peri arteriolar that's what the word says peri arteriolar lymphoid sheath so both of them are present in the white pulp but around the arterioles of the white pulp peri arteriolar you will find the t cells so these are all b cell t cell question uh, all uh, red pulp white pulp questions quick revision all the leukemias lymphomas are in the white pulp but hairy cell leukemia and hepatosplenic lymphoma are in the red pulp next all the b and t both b and t cells are in the white pulp but the t cells are in a special area known as pals next in the spleen amyloid deposition in the white pulp is sagospleen amyloid deposition in the red pulp is lardaceous spleen so that is also done and let's move on to the next question there comes your question number 4 tumors causing thrombosis are all except it's a simple mnemonic tumors causing thrombosis are all except read this word carefully yes guys apml which you just studied prostate cancer breast cancer lung cancer so i'm waiting for the answer to this one actually right so here we have okay i'm not many many answers for this uh b is one answer and so basically some of you say prostate and some of you say lung so first today i'll give you this very very simple mnemonic which you must have seen in all these review books of yours that you have for the previous year question some of you also say apml no so i've got every answer okay so let me tell you what are the tumors that cause thrombosis pehle to thrombosis wale tumors kaun se stomach cancer which was not there in the options lung cancer which is there in the options so it causes thrombosis apml which was there in the options it causes thrombosis and prostate and pancreatic cancer out of which prostate cancer was also there in the question so actually the answer that i did not get was the answer to this which of the following cause thrombosis all except so which doesn't cause thrombosis clearly i don't see breast cancer in this list i don't see breast cancer here so the answer to this question is breast cancer let's do a repeat stomach cancer so very simple mnemonic slap thrombosis is caused by slap stomach cancer lung cancer apml p for pancreatic and prostate now there's one little confusion that you know that worried me what was over here was that some of you answered apml guys right now we studied that acute promyelocytic leukemia can be associated with dic what is dic abhi to padha apml is aml m3 it can be associated with dic what is dic disseminated intravascular coagulation disseminated intravascular coagulation what is coagulation coagulation is clot formation thrombus formation so this should definitely not have been answered na apml nahi answer karna tha it definitely causes thrombosis and dic so having said that i hope you will remember the mnemonic slap 
and that is sorted. Question number five, there's an image that is shown below. You need to tell me which of the following fits well. So yes, the following image depicts what? The following image depicts Renke's crystalloids, Michaelis Gutman bodies, HP bodies, Kivet bodies. Okay, so over here, it's an easy one. Many students said that such a question came in neat PG, but actually this did not come in neat PG. It was a, uh, you know, a false thing. It did not come this year, but expected one. Yes, and that is Michaelis Gutman body. So first, what disease? First, this answer to Hogya. This is Michaelis. I'll explain that. But first, tell me the other ones. Where do you see Renke's crystalloids? Where do you see Renke's crystalloids? These are seen in the testis. These are seen in Leydig cells of the testis. You will also see this in a normal Leydig cell. Normal Leydig cell in a male. You will also see this in a Leydig cell tumor. So, Renke's crystalloids are seen in Leydig cells. Which skin disorder shows you Kivet bodies? Kivet bodies which are also known as colloid bodies, which are also known as cytoid bodies. So all the CC words, Kivet bodies, colloid body, cytoid body, very good. They are seen in lichen planus. Which disease of skin? Lichen planus. Everyone knows this. Okay, what are HP bodies? Now very logically, think carefully and answer. Where do you see HP bodies? Yes, guys, where do we see HP bodies? Okay, so I'm getting one answer. HP bodies, one answer that I'm getting is molluscum contagiosum. Very good. So I've got the second answer also from Dr. Purva and Dr. Tarek. Guys, one HP bodies, are, I didn't give you the full form of HP bodies. So if you're asking me that HP stands for Henderson-Patterson bodies, if HP stands for Henderson Patterson bodies, then we are talking about molluscum. But the second disease that you've told me where you see HP bodies is trachoma, chlamydia trachomatis, trachoma. So then which HP bodies are we talking about? We are talking about Halbus Teeder Provaski as uh, bodies. Halbus Teeder Provaski, Provaski bodies so again in the exam note what the hp is for henderson patterson bodies is molluscum the skin disease halbus teeder provaski bodies are seen in trachoma so over here i just wrote hp and that is also done now what are we left with now we have michaelis gutman bodies michaelis gutman bodies was the image given where do you see it you see it in melacoplakia so first and foremost this is the very famous image of melacoplakia. What organ is shown over here? The organ shown over here is a urinary bladder and here you can see the ureters very nicely you can appreciate the urinary bladder being marked over here. Now beyond that do you see these yellowish plaques on the urinary bladder over here? These yellowish raised mucosal plaques and the point is that when would a, when would a clinician see it? Obviously, you will say that, ma'am, the patient has come to you with some urinary complaints. Patient is being taken up for a cystoscopy. By the urologist, a cystoscopy is being done. And on a cystoscopy, you saw these yellow plaques. And the first impression that the urologist gets or is mistaken for is a cancer. That is the clinical importance. Melacoplakia can be mistaken for cancer. Now, there are two questions. What is melacoplakia? It's definitely not cancer. What is it? It is a defect in phagocytosis. It is a defect in phagocytosis. So I want to ask you a question. Tell me a yes or no. If I'm saying that phagocytosis is defective, tell me, uh, for example, this patient got infected with E. coli. This patient had a urinary tract infection with E. coli. Tell me, will that E. coli be killed off? If phagocytosis is defective, will that E. coli be killed off and will it uh, be eliminated from the body? No. So that defect in phagocytosis is known as melacoplakia. Point number one. So you've understood the cause of it. The next thing that you need to know is what do you see microscopically? So M for M guys. Microscopic examination of melacoplakia shows you what I'm 
what was the question michaelis gutman bodies so you have michaelis gutman bodies so before i show you that image um, someone says that there is a little bit of a buffer dr sumita says that um, is that so guys anyone let me know if there is any um, problem in the streaming we can obviously correct it any time and if all's good then we can proceed so this is what i want to tell you that first and foremost uh, we have Michaelis Gutman bodies. No, everyone says all's well. So, Dr. Sumita, please check at your end. What are Michaelis Gutman bodies? If I answer in one word, they are nothing but calcium. So, obviously, you will tell me that uh, you will ask me where did calcium come from in Melacoplakia? Now, again, coming back to the point, remember I told you patient got infected with E. coli. So, can you think of any cell which comes and eats up the organism which causes phagocytosis? Which is that most hungry cell which causes phagocytosis? That hungry cell is always a macrophage. So, what you see over here, if you see this, for example, this cell, it's a macrophage. What is this cell? It's a macrophage. So, these macrophages are trying to do phagocytosis, but are they successful? No, because there's a problem in phagocytosis, right? So, macrophage is trying to eat up the E. coli. So, it's engulfed the E. coli, but it can't kill it because phagocytosis is defective. So, imagine if this is a macrophage, can you see over here there are these blue-blue color bodies? If that's a macrophage, blue color body. If that's a macrophage, blue color body. There are random blue color bodies that are present. Why are these blue color bodies present? Because that organism, that E. coli, which cannot be killed, that is showing calcium deposition. Whichever organism that cannot be killed is showing the presence of calcium deposition. And that calcium is known as Michaelis Gutman bodies. So, if I have to put it up in a very, very simple way, and now one more thing I have to tell you, that if this is a cell, and this is, the, this is the nucleus, okay? This is a macrophage. Which cell am I talking about? I'm talking about a macrophage. It tried to eat the E. coli, but it was unable to, or any infection. It was unable to because phagocytosis is defective. So, it ended up becoming calcium. It ended up showing you the deposition of calcium. And all this deposition of calcium, you called it Michaelis Gutman bodies. But what is this entire cell known as? This entire cell, the macrophage eating up the calcium, this entire cell is known as von Hansmann cell. It is known as von Hansmann cell. So, I think some of you did, did tell me this in the beginning, correct? Dr. Karthik, I can see. So, these are von Hansmann cell named after the scientist. So, what is it? It's a macrophage which has eaten calcium. That is about it. And Dr. Suraj, like you say, histiocyte. Histiocyte and macrophage are the same thing, right? Isn't histiocyte and macrophage exactly the same thing? So, it's same. Having said that, simple question was asked to you, which of the following or what does the image depict? You were shown multiple Michaelis Gutman bodies. So, your answer was MG bodies. Disease M for M, Melacoplakia. Having said that, let's move on to the next question. Here you have, it's a very simple sudden twist and turn to microbiology. What is the effective drug for fasciola hepatica? Fasciola hepatica, that happens to be a trematode. What is the effective drug of choice in this? Very good. That was a very prompt answer because everyone knows this. It's a previous year question and an easy one. So, okay, there's a little bit of a confusion. So, see, when I say all trematodes, all trematodes are treated with praziquantel. But when I talk about fasciola hepatica, it is treated by Trikla bendazole, right? So, that is what is the twist in the story. So, I asked you not about all trematodes. I asked you about fasciola hepatica and that is treated with Trikla bendazole. So, simple, simple one-liner. I don't have much to elaborate upon this, right? Okay, let's move on to the other question. And this is what we have. Which of the following organisms? Okay, so the organisms having a polysaccharide capsule are all except... So, basically, all of them are capsulated organisms. They've asked you which of them does not have a polysaccharide capsule. This is a previous year question. A previous year question. Perfect. So, that's a very, very prompt, quick response. We are dealing with bacillus 
anthracis. So what are we going to do? Anyone who remembers the mnemonic, what is the mnemonic for capsulated organisms? What is the mnemonic for all the capsulated organisms? Anyone? Do you remember that mnemonic? And uh, yes, Dr. Surat Jyoti has told us. Perfect. So yes, you guys do remember the mnemonic. So P A. So we have P A N I C K E R. So let's do a quick recap. We have P for pneumococcus and pseudomonas. Pneumococcus and pseudomonas. A for anthrax. A for anthrax. N for Neisseria. Which Neisseria? Neisseria meningitidis. I for Haemophilus influenza. C for Cryptococcus. K for Klebsiella pneumoniae. And E R for Yersinia. So repeating for all of you and it's quite an important one. Please remember you have Pneumococcus, Pseudomonas, Anthrax, Neisseria meningitidis, Haemophilus influenzae, Cryptococcus. We have Klebsiella and Yersinia. Now they asked you which of the following is not polysaccharide. So let me tell you all the ones that I have shown over here, they are all polysaccharide. That is what a capsule is made up of. Capsule is made up of polysaccharide. However, in Bacillus anthracis, the capsule is made up of poly. Peptide. And yes, Yersinia can also have polypeptide, but primarily only and only polypeptide will be present in Bacillus anthracis. So let me tell you that when you're dealing with Bacillus anthracis and someone asks you what are the virulence factors, you will say number one, capsule, number two, toxin. What is the capsule made up of? The capsule is made up of polypeptide. It is made up of polyglutamate. Whereas the next thing, if I ask you, what is the toxin made up of? Anyone, what is the toxin made up of, guys? Very good. So I've got an answer to that also. The toxin is said to be a tripartite, tripartite toxin means it has three parts. Yes, and everyone's right. It is having a mnemonic of EPL. Can you tell me the full form of EPL? Which factors? So E for edema factor. P for protective factor, P for protective factor and L for lethal factor. So we have three things. Number one, edema factor. Number two, protective factor. And number three, lethal factor, EPL. So that's again an exception. Why exception? Because anthrax toxin has how many parts? It has three parts. It is a tripartite toxin, whereas all the other toxins of the bacteria family, all the other toxins are always having two parts. They are bipartite. So again, a uh, you know, difference that you have. Having said that, uh, I can say Bacillus anthracis is all about exceptions. Capsule is there, but how is the capsule different from the others? It's made up of polypeptides. Toxin is there. How is toxin different from the others? It's made up of three parts, tripartite. And this was a simple question, which of the following does not have a polysaccharide capsule? Simple one, bacillus anthracis. Well, having said that, now let's move on to uh, the next question. Again, a switch in the, you know, the in the topic or you can say in the subject altogether. So let's read a 20 year old woman who has an ovarian tumor removed. The surgical specimen is 10 centimeters in diameter and is cystic. The cystic cavity, and there goes the answer, has black hair and sebaceous material. Histopathological examination shows benign differentiated tissues, including skin, cartilage, brain, and mucinous glandular epithelium. What is the diagnosis? Easy one, so at least like I say, one confidence booster, which I want the entire class to be up and awake and giving us. Most of you said E. Most of you said teratoma. And if you said teratoma, I have to agree with you. So I agree with you. Yes, it's an ovarian teratoma where you're seeing hair and sebaceous and skin, cartilage, brain, all of that. One or two of you said teratocarcinoma means it's a teratoma with cancer arising in it. But where is the cancerous part? There is no cancer. Very clearly, they've mentioned that there are benign differentiated tissues like skin, cartilage, brain. If you saw this, mucinous glandular epithelium 
this is normal epithelium glandular epithelium doesn't mean a cancer has right now there is no cancerous tissue here so your answer will not be a teratocarcinoma your answer will be a simple straight teratoma so yes teratoma like all of you are telling me correctly at least two germ layers at least two germ layers out of ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm at least two germ layers should be present and teratoma is of two types mature and immature when these words are used they are important because mature indicates that it is always always benign where so in your question since everything was benign i can safely say that this was a mature teratoma whereas which teratoma has a little bit propensity or potential for malignancy which teratoma can give you malignant potential immature teratoma so mature is benign immature is malignant okay having said that this was a confidence booster one more confidence booster i have for you because i want all of you to attempt this easy one but a neat ini and fmg favorite pan exam favorite question yes what is that so identify the inheritance that is shown in the pedigree chart and i think everyone's got it again i want a every student be it second year intern fmg neat inict will be able to answer this yes this is a mitochondrial inheritance so itna to um, you know everyone has told me so why not i teach you like a twist in the story but let me first tell you what this is there let me tell you the normal so here you have a mother here you have a mother and the mother gives birth to three children mother is diseased and then you see that all the three children are diseased so basically when the mother is giving the disease to all the children it is a clear cut mitochondrial dna inheritance when this girl becomes a mother she also gives the disease to all the children so mother to all but remember when this boy becomes a father he has not given the disease to anyone so father to none because mitochondrial dna does not go from the father mitochondrial dna goes only from the mother so mother to all father to none is the mitochondrial inheritance now what's the twist in the story this was easy right if i draw something like this now everyone has to tell me a yes or no this is a mother so um, she has probably given birth to two children one girl and one boy both of the children are affected when this boy further had a family there were no children affected abhi tak mitochondrial lag raha hai mother to all father to none okay when this girl got married now this is what is seen you expected that if you are doing mother to all in the first generation then over here also you will do mother to all what inheritance do you call this or do you still call this mitochondrial do you want to still call this mitochondrial inheritance yes no that is the twist in the story which i want to ask you yes guys it's mitochondrial one one answer i've got that says yes ma'am this is still mitochondrial some of you say that no ma'am this is xld so guys this is still mitochondrial because look at the first generation the mother is giving the disease to all the children is giving the disease but then this girl is probably giving the disease only to one child why not to the other child what happened over here what happened over here for those who said xld no no xld is totally different i'll tell you but what happened over here is a concept that you see in mitochondrial diseases now reason answer to sabne de diya that this is still mitochondrial but then why is this child not showing you mother had to give the disease to everyone right so why is this child suddenly coming up normal because all mitochondrial disorders show you something known as heteroplasmy anyone have you heard this term heteroplasmy what does hetero mean hetero means different different plasmy means dna so for example if this is a cell let's go to basics this is a cell this is a nucleus do you agree that one thing that the cell will have will be the regular nuclear dna second thing that the cell will have will be mitochondrial dna do you agree mitochondrial dna is circular so can i draw these multiple multiple mitochondrial dna are present now 
in the same cell see this is the same cell some of the mitochondrial dna are going to be totally normal i have given them a blue color some of the mitochondrial dna are going to be very very abnormal i have given them a red color so can i say i have normal mitochondrial dna also and i have mutant mitochondrial dna also in the same cell does this diagram depict the same i have the same cell and i it has two different types of mitochondrial dna that is heteroplasmy what is heteroplasmy different mitochondrial dna's in the same cell in the same cell so some of it is normal some of it is mutant both of which you've got from the mother normal also you got from the mother mutant also you got from the mother because mitochondrial dna comes only from the mother now the proportion varies guys if the normal ends up being more the patient will end up being normal the person will end up being normal and if the mutant end up ends up being more then the patient will end up having a disease so in this child when this child received the mitochondrial dna from the mother which one was more common or more predominant she has the disease so which one is more predominant the mutant mitochondrial dna was more predominant in the cell whereas when this boy ended up getting the mitochondria from the mother which part of mitochondrial dna ended up being more predominant the normal mitochondrial dna ended up being more predominant so can sometimes a variation be seen what is the variation of mitochondrial diseases known as it is known as heteroplasmy i hope i've made myself clear this was the twist in the story that i wanted to tell you and why not ad no generation skipped but uh, i've got two questions now some of you said that ma'am why is this not autosomal dominant some said why is this not x linked dominant i'll take up both queries so first tell me what do you understand by autosomal dominant autosomal is there any x and y is there any gender predilection no there is no gender predilection so first and foremost this is having no gender predilection second are all the generations affected yes all the generations are affected so if this is your uh, because it's an autosomal dominant disorder na so generations can't be skipped it will happen in every generation with the same come back over here see this is generation number 1 and here the mother is affected yahan to affected hai this is generation number 2 all the kids are affected but see from this father was the next generation affected are you seeing all generations affected over here think again look at this part of the chart also the third generation over here is not is not affected do you still want to call it ad do you want uh, so who asked me a dream catcher good username so do you still want to call it ad no the third generation over here is getting skipped ad nahi lag raha next someone asked me that ma'am why is this not x linked disorder x linked dominant xld so tell me uh, xld if this is a father this is a male and uh, he has a problem in his x chromosome x linked dominant disorder so dad gives the x chromosome to whom dad gives the x chromosomes to sons or daughters dad gives the x chromosome to all the daughters it gives it to all the daughters y chromosome goes to all the sons x chromosome goes to the daughters so don't you think in x linked dominant disorder if x chromosome of the dad has the problem then all the daughters will also have the problem all the daughters will also have a problem hai na so that's how you learn for x linked dominant everything is ddd for x linked dominant it is dad to daughter dad to daughter over here dad to no one was seen the dad was just not giving the disease to anyone so definitely this is not the case so i hope your queries are sorted guys neither is it xld neither is it ad this is the clear cut mitochondrial even if i skip it it could be because of heteroplasmy now that is also a possibility that we have well having said that the last mcq that we have question 10 for the day is this sample collected covid is needed na neat pg ignored covid but we can't ignore covid sample collected from the suspected covid 19 patient is stored in a vtm at which condition that's a very practical question that they've asked you 
VTM. First, you need to tell me what is VTM. Then you need to tell me how many days and at what temperature can I store the sample. So, so why not I teach you only and then get back to this question. When I talk about VTM, VTM is the viral transport medium. Now, by now, all of us, either because of exam or because of COVID or just being in contact with someone, we have got a COVID test RT-PCR done and we all know that the nasal swab is inserted into this bottle, into this vial and that vial has a little bit of some fluid. What is that fluid? That fluid is a viral transport medium. You don't have to know what that VTM contains. Only for your, you can say, for your general knowledge and because COVID is such a thing where you should be well read about as a doctor. So you should know that it has a lot of ions, it has saline, it has even fetal bovine serum and it has some antibiotics so that the other bacteria don't grow. So it has some ions, it has serum and it has antibiotics. That's what VTM contains. And what is the time span or what is the temperature at which one should store it? So up to 72 hours, 2 to 8 degree. Up to 72 hours, 2 to 8 degree. So um, definitely uh, say roughly approximately we can say 3 days. So 3 days, 2 to 8 degree. 3 days, 2 to 8 degree. However, Ideally, this is not happening, but if there is a delay for few days, like four days, five days and so on, then you'll have to freeze it. There are two temperatures. One was given by the CDC body. One was given by ICMR body. You don't have to learn. You can remember it as a range. Anywhere between a minus 70 to a minus 80. But is this being practiced? It's not being practiced because, you know, COVID testing is so rampant nowadays that as soon as the sample is collected, it can reach a nearest lab and it can get you know tested asap so you really don't need to rely on this aspect of it okay so guys this was your answer 2 to 8 degree for 3 days with which your 10 mcqs with whatever images i could show you in between are done and i hope you've got your adequate morning boost i hope everyone has so we would be continuing but now kickstart morning sessions would continue um on the app as well so you guys can uh, let me know um, you know what are the topics you're looking out for please put them up on telegram because i'll be making a separate plan for the same and till then you know till the time we don't get to uh, 29th 29th of september is when we are starting with the kickstart morning sessions on the unacademy app and till then um, firstly the timing will be 7 30 a.m so it's going to be a 50 minute class 7 30 a.m to 8 20 p.m and having said that you need to tell me the topics and till then i'll keep posting some morning boost on youtube so we have uh, tomorrow and day after 27th and 28th till then at least 8 a.m or 7 30 a.m in the morning on youtube we can uh, at least have the same ritual and then from 29th September we'll switch on to the app on the app we'll have a poll so obviously your guy not my favorite but your favorite leaderboard will be there so you guys can wake up early morning to probably have a leaderboard yes so now we followed this for almost 160 days earlier so we were on track we lost that track because of the exam and post exam slumber now we are back on track we have to start waking up at 7 30 in the morning and we have to start getting in sync with this right so thank you so much guys don't worry about the pdf i'll circulate this pdf on telegram so don't worry at all so yes for those who are new this kickstart morning that i'm talking about it's a special class this is on the unacademy app and this will happen every day at 7.30 a.m. And this is free for everyone to view. Apart from that, guys, uh, there are a couple of batches that have started uh, for both FMG as well as for NEET PG students. So these are the different plans that are available. And the referral code for the same happens to be PATHOLIVE. So if you want to join any special or paid class, that's your referral code. Okay, thank you so much for joining in. And name of my Telegram group is Pathology by Dr. Preeti Sharma. So pathology by my name is how you need to search for it. Telegram, Facebook, Instagram, everything is by the same name. So you can join. Thank you so much. Have a great, great day. And uh, I'll be meeting you once more. And that is at 10 p.m. Because at 10 p.m. we would be talking about IOTD. That is image of the day, right? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a great day.